ITV News Central, good afternoon. A review into the rape of a toddler by a nursery worker has criticised Ofsted and council staff for failing to properly investigate concerns about his behaviour. Paul Wilson, who's 21, was working at the Little Stars Nursery in Neachels in Birmingham when he raped the girl at least twice in 2010. He was caught when police searched his home after an unconnected complaint from a teenage girl about sexual threats made over the internet. The review by the Safeguarding Children Board criticises Ofsted, nursery managers and Birmingham Social Services for a lack of vigilance. It's being reported that a three-year-old boy who died in a swimming pool in Spain came from Leicestershire. Shea Colford was found floating in water at a villa in a village near Malaga. Shea's great-grandmother described him as a lovely little boy. A father campaigning for better protection for children, snatched and taken abroad without permission, has handed in a petition to number 10 Downing Street. Sean Felton from Cannock had to fly to Thailand to rescue his own son. Our political correspondent Alison McKenzie reports. The end of a hundred mile plus walk from the Midlands to Downing Street to raise awareness of the pain of being the parent of an abducted child. Sean Felton from Cannock was reunited with son Job after a battle with the authorities in Thailand where his ex-wife had taken the child without permission. Some countries respect what's known as the Hague Convention, which allows negotiation and the law to return the child to Britain. Others do not. They can't do health checks on the child. You don't know whether the child's alive. You don't know whether the child's, you know, what the child is doing. And uh, we're just asking the government to be more proactive in, in helping parents whose children are missing. The Foreign Office does have teams who help in abduction cases, but it's difficult when the countries are not signed up to a reciprocal agreement. Sean says his charity, Abducted Angels, will continue to campaign. Alison McKenzie at Westminster for ITV News. Commuters have used Nottingham train station for the first time since it reopened to the public. The station and surrounding lines have been closed for track and re-signalling work at a cost of more than £100 million. Michael Sibbert reports. The trains are back. After yesterday's reopening of Nottingham station, today the commuters got to ditch the replacement bus service and use the railways for the first time in nearly six weeks. It's actually taken about just under an hour this morning, as, as would expect, it was all on time this morning. Um, when I was on the, on the bus it's probably taken about an hour and a half, so it's, it's a big improvement, yeah. It's been very frustrating over the last few weeks, so it'll be nice to see it when it's finished. It was a lot smoother coming in, you know, just smoother on the tracks, didn't feel so bumpy. Most of the work that's been completed has been behind the scenes, replacing track and signals that were more than 40 years old. Where I'm standing now used to be just track, this is the brand new platform for this train. It's going to Liverpool, others from here will go to Norwich and Mansfield. The only other real cosmetic change to the station at the moment is just across the track here on platform seven where you can just see the new canopy. Trains from there that go to London used to be able to only exit the station in one direction. Now they can go both ways. It's all about improving flexibility and therefore hopefully reliability. This is just phase two of the redevelopment project. There'll still be plenty of work going on at the station right up until spring next year. Michael Sibbert, ITV News, Nottingham. Meanwhile, engineers and Birmingham City Council say the project to refurbish the St Chad's and Queensway tunnels has been a success. The tunnels are on course to reopen as planned next week. Callum Watkinson reports. Balancing the need to fix these tunnels with the convenience of motorists has meant a lot of hard work for the teams on the ground here. Fireproofing has been mixed up and sprayed on. LED lighting put up and wired in. Some sections of wall have been taken down to create new safety gates. And the concrete arches between the two bores have been filled in. Hundreds have laboured round the clock and covered themselves in glory according to the boss, who claims the tweaks they've made to traffic control will make moving around easier for all of us even after the tunnels open. It looks like this project is sure to finish on time and within budget and the chaos that many commuters feared simply hasn't materialised. That's been largely due to careful planning and meticulous traffic management. And with just a week to go, the end is now in sight 
for these workmen. Callum Watkinson, ITV News, Birmingham. Let's see what the forecast is going to be like. Lucy Kite. few days of sun. <laughs> You've got to be prepared. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Hello, well, it looks like we've got a cloudy end to the week, so we need to make the most of this afternoon and tomorrow. We did see a weather front move in from the northwest overnight, so the cloud did build through this morning, and we saw some mist and fog patches moving in from the east as well. But gradually, the sunshine is getting to work, and we do have a decent afternoon ahead of us. Just the chance of one or two showers in the southwest corner here. Good temperatures above the seasonal average, highs of 21 or 22 degrees Celsius. So feeling lovely in the sunshine with light winds as well. Have a lovely afternoon. I'll see you later on. Flybe, sponsors of ITV Central Weather. That's it, Samina's back from holiday and she'll be joining me here in the studio for ITV Central News at 6. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.